Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting Spring Daisy. This is the sketch for the painting and there was no reference photo used. This is just a sketch that I did drawing the shapes of daisies and this is intended not to be a rendering of a bunch of daisies. This is more a design exercise, almost an abstract representation of the daisies. This is a small 8x10 inch painting done on a 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. This is intended to get you to loosen up, experiment with some of the design principles, work with negative space, and just focus on just shape, value. It uses a limited palette. There's only three colors I've used sap green, pyro red, and raw sienna. I begin the painting by taking the raw sienna and I'm going to paint the center of the flower shapes. And I'm using a very uh, saturated mixture of the paint. My, my brush is fully loaded. You can see the drops of water. And what I'm going to do once I paint these three uh, shapes is I'm going to take some uh, salt and I'm going to sprinkle it in the center of these to give it some texture. Now I'm taking just a touch of sap green And again, you can see how, uh, how much moisture is in the, the mixture that I'm putting on the paper. And here I'm going to take some fine sea salt, which is more coarse than table salt, and sprinkle it in the center. And then I'll spritz it with a coarse spray just to create a little bit more texture. Just a little bit of water, and then I'll dry this thoroughly. Next, I'm going to take a tissue and I'm just going to knock off the salt, which uh, when it's dry, it sticks to the paper, so you really have to rub it off. And you can see the texture that was created. Now I'm going to apply a wash around the center of the flower. This is kind of an area where it would be shadowed. I'm using a half inch flat brush and from here on out I'm pretty much just using mixtures of uh, sap green and pyrrole red. The pyrrole red starts to neutralize the green and I can make it a very warm mixture or I can make it lean more towards the, the, the green side of things. So uh, all these mixtures that you're going to start to see are uh, the pyrrole red and sap green and various ratios. So the, the, the shapes I've drawn for these flowers, as I said, they're almost abstract and uh, I'm just I'm being very loose with my brush strokes. I'm letting water flow around intentionally just to create interest on the surface. And again, think of this almost as just a, a study or an exercise, uh, just experimenting with a limited palette and uh, creating uh, uh, shapes and making shapes come forward and go back by working in, in positive and negative space. When I'm working this way, I'll, I'll put down some very uh, fluid brush strokes. So my brush is very saturated. Then I'll often come in with a spray bottle and just soften it up a little bit more and just let paint run. And I'll do that a number of times. Uh, while I work on this. So here I'm taking the spray bottle, it's a fine mist spray and normally when I'm spraying I, I intentionally move the spray bottle in a, in a certain direction that I want the paint to flow. Now here I'm just going to come back in with a mixture, it's got a little bit more green in it. I started with a half inch flat brush and now I've switched to a quill brush. So the quill brush holds quite a bit of paint and has a fine point. 
And now I've got a, a darker value that I'm putting down. And I'm going to put these values down. And then once again, I'm going to uh, spray them with a fine mist spray bottle just to soften them up a little bit and let that paint flow a little bit. Got a little bit of an edge there. I didn't spray fast enough. There you go. So I'm going to do this in a number of places around the composition. And I'm starting to paint in a negative space, which is in between these uh, the petals. And soften that up, let some of the paint run around. Here, I'm just going to continue this, moving around the composition. I think uh, sap green and pyro red, uh, I think they work well together. I use them a lot. Uh, I use primarily the pyro red to help neutralize the sap green. And uh, so it's not as, as such a raw green, but it's, it's a, a more of an earthy green, more natural green. So here I'm just uh, painting the space, painting off the, the edges of the petals working in negative space and uh, it gets uh, a little bit complex as you start to have overlap with uh, these petal shapes that I've drawn and um, you just have to choose what's in front of what and uh, put your washes in to help uh, make the suggestion of where these layers are and what's on top what's overlapping and my values will get darker as I go and that's normally my painting process is I start with the light washes the very loose washes then I start to get darker and start to uh, paint more hard edges and work with smaller brushes in here I'm just painting in between the petals so this drawing, um, it's a very simple drawing, but you can find it out on my online learning center. I'll have the sketch and the uh, image of the finished piece on the YouTube reference tab on my uh, learning center homepage. And you can see here, it's, right now the paper is wet where I'm putting these brush strokes. So I put them down and those, those edges start to dissolve a little bit and give me a bit of a soft edge. Now I'm going to come in with darker values and I'm going to make some, some shapes in between these petals in this area where I've painted as negative space. And I try to carry these values from one shape to the other to give the the appearance that it's uh, something that's underneath and going underneath these petals so it's a continuous shape and uh, I try to carry the eye from one negative space to the other using uh, that approach so you can see there where there's I carry this value on either side of this petal to make it look like uh, it's a continuation and that's something I do a lot when I'm doing paintings that I'm uh, focusing on uh, negative space and working off negative edges. So I try to break these shapes up some. But I try to make it look like there's movement of light and dark shapes underneath the, the uh, shapes that are on top, the more positive shapes. This can be a challenging way to paint um, because you don't have any reference and you're just you're just trying to imagine shapes moving on top of and underneath of and and you're uh, using your imagination to decide where the mark your brush marks are going to go. But it's an interesting uh, exercise to just experiment with with positive and negative space 
and the motion, direction, um, working with uh, here with a limited palette, but um, it's a chance to really loosen up and just use your imagination and work with creating soft edges and hard edges and uh, letting the, the the wash run over top of different shapes and um, again this is just intended to be kind of a a uh, exercise that just gets you thinking a little bit and here I'm going to bring in a darker value and this is uh, leaning more towards the green side it's a it's a, again it's still just a mixture of pyro red and sap green it just has a heavier, heavier concentration of pigment in the mixture and I'm going to carry that dark value across the the top there and here you can see I'm carrying that value to the next shape and I'm leaving a break there just to make it look like there's a light linear shape moving underneath the, the petals of the flowers and there's nothing that I'm looking at to tell me to do that it's just I, I'm creating those uh, those shapes and uh, as I go and as I paint I just I like to break up the space in between the petals and um, so it's just something that, that, that I'm doing with my uh, just my imagination and here I just put a wash on top there just and sprayed it with the with the, the fine mist spray and keep in mind when you do put your paint down and it dries it's gonna dry about 30 percent lighter than um, when you apply it I'm going to take a wash here with a wash brush of uh, some sap green with a little bit of pyro red in it but it's mostly sap green and uh, I'm just going to tone down some of the the petals I don't want them all to be the same tone not all just pure white and not all green so I want to have some variation so I put that wash down and then I softened the edges a little bit and diffused that color with the spray bottle. And now here I'm taking a mixture, it's got a little bit more pyro red in it. Still the same two colors though. I think this is a difficult thing sometimes for for people to do is just come over top of something they've been working on painting and just put a glaze over top and let paint run um, but whatever you've done underneath it is going to come through this glaze unless it's too heavy now here I've dried this and I'm going to take an eraser I'm going to take off the pencil marks where I can because I want some of these shapes just to run together so there's a lot of lost edges here working in negative space positive and negative space having lost and found edges hard edges soft edges and uh, that's some of those areas I just won't define I'll just let them run together here I'm coming in with my darkest value yet and still pyro red and sap green it's just a heavier concentration of pigment in my mixture although the, the mixture is still very uh, wet it's a it's very fluid and I'm just putting some some dark value uh, around the composition just some touches of dark value here I'm trying to make it uh, look as if that there's something moving behind these petals with these that dark linear marks I made And here I'm just moving around the composition, putting in some of these dark value marks, giving the uh, appearance that uh, these are, are dark shapes that are uh, being overlapped but moving behind the, from one petal to the next underneath them.
I often come in towards the end of my painting process and, and start putting in some dark value marks in the areas where I feel it needs it to give it a little bit of pop. And, and that's whether I'm doing a painting like this or even if I'm using a, a photo for reference, uh, at normally when I reach that point, I'm, I'm not using the photo so much. I'm just focusing on design and I'll just look at that painting and just decide where, where I need some, some contrast or I need to strengthen an edge or something. And I'll come in and start putting in some just some dark valued marks off of edges and uh, in negative space uh, just as I am here. And there you have my little painting Spring Daisy which is uh, as much an exercise as a painting. But I hope you give this a try and just try to loosen up, work in positive negative space, think about hard edges, soft edges, lost and found edges, and just have a little bit of fun and, and be creative with this. And you could use other colors too. You don't have to use the uh, limited palette that I used. I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, I've posted the sketch on my YouTube reference page, which you can find on my online learning center. And if you have questions, you can always email me at contactarsserviceart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.